Hello, hello. All right, today we're gonna to talk about the latest Looker Studio updates and how you can use them because frankly, some of them are useless and there's better options, but we're gonna hop into like the nitty gritty of how you can actually apply it to your life. So let me just show you what that looks like really quickly because here is that report. They have these really, really awesome charts that you can now kind of use and uh, adjust as you'd see fit based off a target. So here, for example, we can adjust our target rate and maybe say it's down. And now you can see over here, the conversion rate is 18.92% during this time range. And if we said, hey, our target was 22%, now we are off by, we're only 86% of our goal, right? Um, same thing for up here, we can see our trends over time. And then if we wanted to put our average in per day, say we wanted to have an average of 10 leads per day, well, we're down here currently at only 60% of our goal during this date range. The beauty of this kind of method here is that if I look at 30 days, because we're talking about averages for the most part, uh, these will stay consistent. So here you can see the average is 7.1, uh, but uh, it's, so it's a higher number. And then if you wanted to say, let's go back into... I don't know, January, let's look at January 1st. I'm not sure what it is, but let's just check it out. You will then see how that will go up or down lower there. So let's talk about how we can build these, how those features that Looker Studio has rolled out can apply to you and me. So um, if you have not yet downloaded the cheat sheet over on lookerstudio.vip forward slash YouTube, go do it. It has eight optimization tips for your next dashboard, super broad and also super tactical. At the same time, I know the best of both worlds there. So uh, go download that if you're not, and you also are ending up on the newsletter, which is really great because I write that every single Thursday. All right. That's all. Now let's hop into it. So what you'll see here is we are inside of Looker Studio. I'm gonna hit edit. So the first thing that you're gonna ask is how do you get these little charts here? Previously, you had to do something like this. So if you see behind my head, you will see how I hover over it. We have two separate charts. So this is a spike line chart. If you come up here, you'll see spike line right there. And this is a big scorecard. <laughs> that's it. It's just a scorecard that's white on the background. So that's all that this is down here. Um, and how we used to do that. Up here, we will see it's a single thing. So how do we do that? How do we build these um, right here? So I'll just take the sessions one and let's add a new chart. So I'm just gonna add a, a scorecard, super simple. We'll start really basic, go down here. And I'm just gonna make it a big, kind of fill that grid. Okay, by default, this is what you'll have. Then you're gonna come over here on the side and you can see here, you can add a spike line. To add a spike line, you have to have a date dimension. It's gonna automatically filter to show only the date uh, schemas, and ta-da, there you go. Now you have this automatically. The next piece here is you have the other comparison options. This is like, frankly, really confusing when you first use it. You're like, let me just use a value. Let me use a, like, I don't know what to do here. Maybe there's a property, I don't know. Um, but in general, I think most people that use a spike line chart wanna use the previous period. So what you can do is come down here and say, compare that to the previous period. Hit apply. And then now you'll see we are up 18% versus previous period. And we have a pretty slick looking uh, design right there. And once you hop into style of the same exact thing, let me just see if I can pull this out a little bit, make it a little bit chonkier. Um, if once you head to style, this is where things start to get spicy because you can turn that into a filled line. So similar to what we have there. And you can also make it smooth. Smooth, I don't find to be the most helpful in general, but you can if you want to. Um, by default, this is checked with the hide component value. This allows you to then have the um, ability to see what on earth this is in reference to. So previous 32 days. And the cool part of this is it's dynamic. So if I change this and say, hey, I wanna look at the last seven days, hit apply, you will see this is versus the previous seven days. So it is much more dynamic than previously because most scorecards uh, would just give you a percentage and you'd be like, what is this? You have hard code it. Now you have everything in here. That is what this tool is. Um, pros and cons, let me just go through it because this is the previous way that we would do it is where we'd have a spike line chart and this is the new way. Pro is it's in one chart. So if you did not know, Looker Studio only allows you to have one or 50, 50 individual charts on a page. If you were rocking a lot of charts, then this might be something to consider because now you don't need as many charts because you only have 50 um, and now you could cut that into half, right? You have only 25. That's a pro. 
a con would be the fact that there you can't adjust the margin on the left and right or the padding in this case. It's kind of odd how it comes almost down to the bottom, but not quite. And then it leaves this big margin on the left and right that isn't the same as up here. It's always universally the same there. So it is a little bit weird um, how that kind of plays into things. Um, another kind of con in this grand scheme of things is, is how it looks over a larger date range. So let's just pull up, let's just go from, I don't know, November 1st if we even have data from them. So over a larger period of time, we get that same uh, kind of problem you have with most things is where you have these peaks and valleys and it's really, really hard to get a trend because you're unable to put a trend line on there. You don't even see the trend because it's not possible. So that's another negative. But overall, I think it's gonna level up a lot of like beginner level uh, report building and then you're off to the races, right? Uh, so that is where we sit right now. Now let's talk about the other options that you have in this exact same thing is you can turn this is to show as progress. By default, you're gonna be very confused because show as progress is not something that you're normally used to kind of using. So how does this work? Because the progress is what you are like looking at in comparison. So here is where it actually gets fun. So you have a value, a metric, or none. So if I hit value, what we can do is we can type in how close are we to something. So during this time period, let's say we wanted to have 22,000, right? as our um, target. And for some reason, the starting value is not working. Oh, sorry, I put it in the wrong spot. That's the problem. So say our target value is 22,000. Now it will say we are 101% here of 22,000. I know, pretty sweet. So that is, if you had to hard code a goal, you can do that. The problem is, is that most goals are dynamic. That's why we did the averages up here. So that is one option is you can hard code that and then you can have a starting value as saying, hey, we're gonna start at 20 or 2000, right? What does that look like? Very, very confusing because you're not starting at 2000 when you have a starting point, right? Just keep that in mind. So that is what a value looks like. Then you can use another metric. So this is kind of cool because say you wanted to compare sessions to, I don't know, leads, not, not useful in this case, but now you can compare two metrics to each other. If they're supposed to be equal, if they're supposed to go up and down, you can kind of compare them to each other there. Um, this, again, not helpful in the, in the grand scheme of things because uh, frankly, it doesn't make any sense, but you can keep that in mind as you start building is you can use another metric and I'm gonna show you how to do that in a second uh, using parameters to build something even fun, more fun there. Then you have the option of uh, well, we already talked about value, we got metrics, um, the period, which you kind of know, previous period, it just gives you a, th not that helpful in my, in my personal opinion. But now let's talk about how we can do something like this, folks, because we've talked about the uh, scorecard with the spike line, right? We've talked about how you can use the progress. Now let's build something useful doing these average things where you can adjust them and say, hey, I want 20. And now your average leads per day, it comes down here gives you the exact kind of uh, idea of what that looks like. So let's build ourselves a new page. I'm gonna come out here to edit and we're gonna build a new page from scratch. All right, up here, bam, new page, bam, new page. Okie doke. So what we're gonna do first is we are going to create ourselves some parameters um, and add some charts. So I'm just gonna come in here and add three scorecards because frankly, um, it's gonna be helpful to just kind of give ourselves a reference here. And let's do one more. Okay, so then we're gonna do sessions, leads, and something else, I don't know, sessions. Let's actually, for the sake of this, just do leads. Sessions, leads, etc. So now we have sessions and leads. Let's then do the average per day below them. So here we go. All right, hope you're following along. These are always fun to do live. So now we wanna do average. So you'll see I already have average sessions per day here, but you're like, JJ, how do I do average sessions per day? This is where it gets really fun because what we can do is create a new field. I already did this, so we're just gonna do it live. And what we can do here is we can say, I wanna know count distinct, right? And then I wanna know the day, right, of the date. Right, so now we're kind of distinct of date, which is gonna give us the number of days, right? Ta-da, because there we go. And then what you can do is you can then say, so that's gonna give you a number, like let's just say, I'll just show you what it looks like. 
count distinct of date, and let's just look at a, the last, uh, let's look at the last 30 days, 14 days, let's go 14 days. Ta-da, so here our new field now tells us 14 because that's the number of days, we've counted the number of days, and then what we can do is we can take our sessions, so let's just boop, our sum of sessions, and divide it by the number of days. So if you have a thousand sessions, or in this case, 2,600 sessions, divided by 14, what does that get us? We will find out. 182 sessions per day. So now we have an average session. So you can take this, folks, um, and it will now tell you average sessions per day because you have that. One caveat to this, because uh, just if you have zero sessions in a day, this count distinct won't work because you will not have a day in that field. A little bit in the weeds, but if you run into that problem, that's your problem. So now we have the average sessions per day right there. And now how do we give ourselves like a, a reference point, right? That is where we're gonna create a parameter. So let me open this data tab. You will see parameters down here and let's create a new field. I'm gonna have a new parameter. New parameter, I'm gonna hide myself just so you can see, uh, oops, that's the wrong button. Um, I'm gonna have myself here so you can just see this. So I'm gonna call this a uh, test because I wanna make sure I delete this afterwards. Uh, test average sessions per day, all right? And this is going to be a whole number just because it's gonna be easier. And we're gonna have the average start at 150 by a default value. So any value will work and we can just hit save on that. We now have our test average sessions per day. Well, I'm not sure why there's a U at the end there. Hit save on that, all right. And now what we can do is we can put in, if we're gonna have a, if we're gonna turn this into a comparison, right? So now we can say, I want to uh, show as a, this thingy. And then what we can do is use a metric here. And now we can throw our test in as the metric. What this does by default is it gives you a formula of min of this, but you can also just get rid of the min. It's not gonna make a difference because uh, of how, like it's not gonna make a difference because there only is one value. So min, max, average, it won't make a difference. Um, but by default, it will give you min. And now folks, you have the answer to your question right there. We now have the average of our default of 150, and we have 186 during this time frame. And what we can do is we can add a control at the top that is an input box or whatever we would like. And we can say we want this to be our parameter of our test average sessions. And now by default, again, just putting this down here as our, our default, go to view mode, make it nice and big. So our average sessions per day, 150 is our target. We are currently above that. 24% above, we're at 124% of that. And if we change this to say we wanted to be at 300, our average session per day, it now says, hey, we are only at 62% of our goal. If you wanna then have the ability to say, go to the style tab and then you can get rid of this. And now we will have a little parameter thing. It says of 300 test average sessions per day. And you can customize this to your liking, right? So that is one way that you can have your average kind of Imagine this in the relation to average ad spend per day. That could be something that you want. Maybe you want to have the average uh, revenue per day. Um, any of those averages, this is how you can do that. So now what you can do in just your whole world, let's just put this average sessions per day. Ba -ba -bing, ba -da boom And then what you can do is you can put that next to, I'm just doing this real big for the sake of the example. We can take this, we can then copy this get rid of these ones. I'm not sure why I made those to begin with. We can put this over here. Let's just highlight those, make them a little bit skintier. Get rid of our data tab. All right. And now we can turn this back into a spike line chart with a date and just keep our sessions. And so now we kind of have both. We have the best of both worlds here. So we have a trend of the number of sessions in general, and then we have this versus with the target there. So now we can change this and say, hey, I want this to be 100. 
We now have a trend line on the right, we have a, a target on the left, and we can use those together to then hit our goals, right? Because the when you start averaging things by day or by number of ad sets, number of any type of average, these parameters become much more, def, uh, more useful in general because you can say, I'm gonna, I want the default to be 150 and all you have to do is come up here and hit reset which if you are building a report for a team member, right, if we're a, uh, within your organization, to do that, all you have to do is now use your new chart, or sorry, not new charts, um, the new controls of the buttons, and you can put a button up here, and then what we can do is we can say, do, 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 a report action of reset, and then you can say a reset calculator in the sense of this. So you can give people, hey, I wanna customize this to say, hey, what, what, what would it like if we had 5,000 sessions per day? Okay, we are a little bit under that if you can see it. And then you can give them a lot of customizations and then you can hit reset calculator and we are back to default. So now you can say something like this, right? This is the, the more useful version. And then you can add that control of a button, put it right there instead of a link, we don't want a link, you can do it as a report feature, come down here, reset and say, back to normal and ta-da. Now you can come in here, everybody can say, I want to customize this, we want our average leads to be at uh, 20 or 20 per day, and we our target conversion rate is just gonna be 10%. What does that look like? hey, we're crushing at the conversion rate. We don't have quite the number of sessions. Our average leads per day aren't doing that well. And then what you can do is you can look at a bigger date range and compare quarters, compare years, compare anything you'd like to, to your new baselines. And then all you have to do is hit back to normal. And now everything is back to normal. So that friends, hopefully with a little bit more useful than everyone else's tutorials I've seen of just showing you these charts exist. Here's an application of kind of building yourself a master dashboard to monitor ad spend, sessions, average leads per day, so you can trend that over time and build actionable reports that are super useful to users worldwide. All right, without further ado, I will see you in the next video, and my name is JJ. See ya.